Okay, so uh, my name's Dr Sam Shepherd. I'm uh, one of the lecturers here at Liverpool John Moores University in the Sports Science Department. I'm part of the Exercise Metabolism and Adaptation Research Group. Uh, one of my primary interests is looking at how the body responds to different types of exercise training on the one hand to improve people's health but on the other hand looking at how um, the body adapts to disuse of the body or in, in obesity or in type 2 diabetes what is going wrong at the muscle level but also at the whole body level. So the main, one of our main research concepts that we're focusing on and we have done for the last sort of five years is this concept of high intensity interval training. From a, from a perspective of, uh, of the society let's say people often don't do enough exercise Find it, uh, find, find it difficult to find time to exercise which is the most important barrier and one of the most commonly cited barriers to not participating in regular exercise um, and certainly when we're talking about exercise we're talking about the government guidelines of 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise um, 30 minutes five times a week to get to that point so the idea of our research and this concept of high intensity interval training is that we can ultimately or we hope we can ultimately achieve health benefits that we associate with normal endurance type training which the government recommends that we do um, but in a much more uh, time efficient manner. So a typical high intensity interval training session might be 30 seconds of real hard effort cycling on a bike for example followed by two or three minutes of rest and we might repeat that three or four times during a single session. A, t a total time of a session be anywhere up to around 20 minutes compare that to the 30 minutes or 40 minutes of endurance training that we're asked to do you know, five times a week. We'll do these sort of sessions three times a week and ultimately what we've shown from the, the sort of research that we've done so far which has covered lean, relatively healthy individuals but also looking at more disease populations so we've started to look in obese individuals. What we see is that at a whole body level we're able to improve their health and fitness um, but as a, as a molecular sort of interest as well as, a, as my role in terms of muscle biochemistry, the increase in mitochondria is very similar and the increase in muscle oxidative capacity. We also see that on the level of the microvascular blood vessels as well, so capillary density is increased to a similar extent with both types of training. So ultimately what we're starting to build up a picture of now is that this idea of high intensity interval training is really time efficient to achieve the same benefits on a whole body level but also uh, a muscle level and a, a blood vessel level um, in terms of the improvements that we see and the benefits to health. We've already shown from this research that the government guidelines that are suggested you can achieve the same benefits in a much more time efficient manner so if people don't have the time um, or, the, or the facilities or whatever it is to be able to undertake this 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise, say they don't have access to a gym for example is there ways that we can adapt what we know from laboratory based studies in terms of high intensity interval training, the things that we've already done in the lab and take those into a more real world environment and ultimately that's what we want to try and address is can we get more people exercising, maybe they need to use this high intensity interval training approach and ultimately if, if it achieves the same benefits in, in health um, that we see from the government guidelines then perhaps the government guidelines need to be slightly altered to take that into account and this new type of training that people might want to achieve. Yeah. We can also look in children all the way up to the sort of elderly, there's a the full spectrum in terms of age and also sort of breadth in terms of diseased populations as well. This, this type of exercise has been started to look at in, you know, in type 2 diabetes patients, in adolescents, elderly individuals across you know, full, full sort of age and, and uh, disease state spectrum it becomes applicable. We, we conduct a lot of our high intensity interval training based research within the lab and we have done in the last five years here at LJMU um, but it's starting to become apparent now that what we see in the lab is the question comes can that be adapted into someone's lifestyle and for that to, you know for us to answer that question we need to take that outside of the laboratory as well so whilst we can perform basic con uh, proof of concept ideas within the laboratory here at John Moores and using these fantastic facilities then we also need to make links with the community so can we um, develop high intensity interval training classes for example that we can take into sports centres that's accessible for members of the general public to then become involved in at a lunchtime for example of a working day.